Okay, so welcome back. This is going to be our uh, DHCP sort of summary and wrap up here. And we're just going to cover a couple of things. Uh, one being a little bit of redundancy for DHCP. If you ask Microsoft, the official statement is that the easiest and most manageable way to create fault tolerance and redundancy with your DHCP servers is by clustering. Now, of course, if you have read the blog post, um, clustering requires the enterprise version of the Microsoft operating system on both nodes of the cluster, so it is more expensive. Something that you could do instead of clustering would be to do a split scope in your IP address, um, your IP address scopes. And essentially, you'll have to use your imagination here. But let's take a look at the scope we created in the last video. It was called 10.10.10.200 .10 .10 to 250. Well, let's say you only had, um, or you had 100, 100 clients on your network, or 50 clients, let's just say, for e simpl simplified uh, reasoning here. So you know that this one scope would handle all of your 50 clients. Now imagine that you went to another DHCP server just a simple standard DHCP server it could be a virtual machine on another physical piece of hardware and you created a new scope so with this new scope let's say you knew that IP addresses 150 to 199 were not being used on your network so you could simply say the name of this scope will be 150 to 199 and you could call this backup scope whatever you'd like to call it now again this would be on a separate physical hardware piece of hardware because it you know obviously if your server died two scopes on one server doesn't really do you much good so we're just gonna click through that and then essentially because 150 to 199 is going to be on the same subnet as your original scope and if you use the same default router and the same DNS servers this would basically completely function just as if um, you know if you had two servers one would pick up right where the other one left off so you create here and this is actually going to tell us that we have a, a conflicting scope but that's okay so you would want to do um, on a on a different on a different physical machine let's see so that will sort of give you a, a, an idea of how to inexpensively um, create a scope actually the reason why it won't let us create this scope is because of our subnet mask um, but you can go through and there's actually a really cool website called I'll bring it up here for you the subnetcalculator.com and so if you're trying to figure out how to do a split scope you can actually use this subnet calculator if you're not so great at doing it um, by hand and this will tell you how to set up a subnet so you can spread it across different machines so you don't have to spend the extra money on the enterprise version of Windows Server 2008 to do that clustering so that's just one small thing that I wanted to um, just kind of let you know about. I don't have any enterprise version of the Windows 2000 software and I don't have an extra box, um, enough memory on my virtual machine to set up two boxes here, but I think you understand the point. Um, if you were to kind of set this up, it could be very, very effective. So um, another thing that we wanted to talk about is something that's fairly new um, within the 2008 option is if we go into properties and where are we at here? Oh, no, we need to go on the scope. Oh, we are on the scope. So we're going to go into properties. And this is filters right here. So if you've ever worked with a uh, wireless network, a lot of times the wireless access point will only allow access to. Um, hosts that you have known MAC addresses for so you would create a list like I know this MAC address is in this wireless card on a laptop uh, that is actually not a wireless only standard if I remember correctly the uh, a standard is 8 
802.1. That is the the wireless standard in the in the suite that goes with this. Don't quote me on that. But what this would allow you to do is you can see enable allow list. So we're not going to turn this on for our scope right now. But you can see for filters, we have this filter tab right bef below our scope. And what you would do, um, you would just go down here. We'll just do deny. So you would go down here and I'm going to click OK. You would go down here into your filters. And for any server that you wanted to allow or to deny, you would simply right click and you would do new filter. So then you would put the MAC address of the piece of hardware that you want to deny from the network and you'd give it a little bit of description. Now this is touted as a security option. Um, I kind of have some issue with this because it doesn't really give you actual security. Anyone with a network sniffer, um, whether it be wireless or um, it be on the wire, anyone with a network sniffer can find the MAC address almost immediately. So, uh, and then, you know, you can go through and you can change the MAC address that your piece of hardware uses. So does this add another layer of protection? Um, yes, I suppose it does. But is it something that any sort of um, nefarious person or hacker who knew what they were doing could overcome absolutely um, but this is something you could consider it could be set up um, you know if you have it on your wireless access point and then you do it on your DHCP server things like that it could be you know just another layer of security so hopefully this will um, allow you to you know understand what's going on one other thing that we want to take a look at is let's take a look at DNS. So for Windows 2000 clients and older, they are not capable of doing dynamic DNS. So if you look here on this DNS tab, and again, we're going to go to the actual server here. Sometimes it does get a little confusing, as you notice, even for me, is it on the scope? Is it on the server? Um, so, but in this, DNS is actually on the server. We're going to go properties click DNS and what this does is this tells this DHCP server to go out and again to update the DNS record so you could use the fully qualified domain name to look up a resource in your Active Directory domain even if it uses DHCP now if you'll notice this checkbox here is not checked let's say you have older legacy clients like Windows NT 98 um, heaven forbid for some unforsaken reason you're using Windows ME these type of operating systems they are not able to go through and um, update DNS on their own so you you could do this and you could set the DHCP server to go out and actually dynamically update um, DNS for them Something that you would want to decide in your network, see you have the two radio boxes here, dynamically update DNS A and PTR records only if requested by DHCP clients. So what an A record is, is it's when you type in www.windservetoots.com, the A record is it gives you back the IP address so your web browser can get to my website if you use the PTR record it's like a reverse DNS lookup so let's say you know that you have an IP address of whatever 165.22.3.4 and but you don't know what the domain name is a PTR record will take that IP address and then point you back to the domain name so forward and reverse lookups um, now again you would basically want to decide do you want the DHCP server to always update the record for the clients or do you want the clients to update the record if they can do it or uh, by themselves so this is something that you would have to decide for your network um, name protection this is something that's relatively new um, so basically what you would do is name protection if you go to register uh, a client an active directory in the DNS and your um, 
DNS server says, hey, I already have a record for this specific fully qualified domain name. Well, DNS name protection will stop that from being overwritten. I actually really like this option because something that hackers will use is called DNS poisoning. And what that does is it if they will enter a record into your DNS server, which will then point you to a location that you don't really want to go. So this is something that you may also really want to look at as well. So we're just going to cancel out of here. Um, hopefully this is giving you just a couple other things to think about when you're considering your implementation of DHCP. I hope again this has been a valuable tutorial for you. If there is a tutorial that you'd like to see, please do send us some um, feedback through our contact form and have a great day. Please join us again on winservetoots.com.